Dr. Mayling Dory uh, joined us last week on our uh, broadcast and has uh, got a, uh, a show called Alternative Truth, which is podcast on Podcast One. Uh, May, good morning to you. Welcome to Triple M's Hot Breakfast. Great to have you here. Thanks for having me back. Great to have you here indeed. And you've brought in Dr. Makesh Hakawal. Uh, Dr. Makesh, uh, thank you very much for coming in this morning. Your background, as I said, a general practitioner, uh, former federal president of the Australian Medical Association from 2005 to 2007. You were photographed in the papers uh, during the week uh, out there. Where, where's your, your practice again? Uh, in Altona North. Altona North. Uh, basically having a drive-through. We see now on the front page of The Age today, $2.4 billion plan to, sp- to battle the spread of coronavirus with 100 pop-up respiratory clinics. First question t- from me to you. How is the medical profession setting itself up for this, given what we've seen in recent times with Dr. Chris Higgins uh, getting uh, himself uh, into some trouble and high-profile uh, criticism and these types of things. How are you, your team, how are you looking after the situation first up? Well, thanks very very much for the invitation and good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, and an honour. Um, obviously, this is a very fast emerging agenda and we have to therefore act more quickly. Uh, what we've had, of course, is a lot of different messages around this from the, when the things started early uh, in January. Uh, and now we're getting some coordination. We're getting uh, a, a single hymn sheet. We're getting a coordinated message from our chief medical officer nationally, working with the state chief medical officers. And that's really important, a coordinated response. In the profession, with those messages, we can then work better. In the hospitals, they're gearing up to t- test more people, obviously preparing for more and more people needing to be admitted. So therefore, more and more people will not get their elective surgery and things like that will will, will start to uh, change that. In general practice land, we have been cut adrift, uh, but I think that's been fixed. Uh, what's happened with um, the case you mentioned uh, was someone who did all the right things with all the right parameters who ended up uh, being pilloried for actually getting self tested. He shouldn't have got tested if you follow the guidelines. Yeah. He got tested, and bad luck, he actually got to be found to have this virus. Um, and um, we live in fear of our regulator because the way in which they work and the way in which they can wipe out your career. Right, so, so we, that, can't, we can't have that. We can't have you guys living in fear. I want to follow up on that question yeah. because, you know, cut adrift is strong language, Mikesh. So you, yeah. you were really upset around the health minister's uh, language and, and admonishing that, uh, you know, practitioner that we spoke about. Is that? I, I think that in a situation where this is a really fast evolving thing and things are changing, yeah. people may say things off the cuff. It's okay to say, look, I shouldn't have said that. Let's get on with it. And we haven't had that. We need to have that. We don't need to have battle lines drawn. I thought the Premier was great yesterday coming out and saying, right, okay, we're getting ourselves set, which is the point you're making now, Doctor, and that is we we now need to move forward. So let's do so. Um, We're going to take our calls in a few moments' time. Um, What is the biggest – if you had a magic wand today, what would you do for the people of Melbourne? What do we need to get to? What's the next step for people to feel a little bit more comfortable? The first thing is to say that if there is testing happening, it's really to make sure the people who are positive can be isolated. And if we do that testing away from where other sick people are, then we can actually make sure that you don't pass that on to the vulnerable people, the older folks. And by older, I don't mean 70s, 80s, 90s. I mean 50s, 60s and 70s. Push it up a little bit, mate. 60s, 70s and 80s, say that one. So, so what do we do there? Do we go to, uh, do we need to get, um, I don't know, uh, community health centres? Do we need to stay away from doctors, clinics, as you said, so that we don't want people who may be going in who might have cancer or might have uh, respiratory problems, who might have other issues. They're the last people who want to be exposed to coronavirus. That's exactly right. And that's why using video is very useful. I think we're going to see some movement on that. So right. we can have this conversation without being in the same room, but we can do it using video. If you need to have face uh, hands-on, you can do that um, in a facility that's away from the normal waiting rooms, and that's what we're trying to set up. And Das, that's just with that yeah. uh, before I ask you a question, that's what's going to happen with the football with the media conferences. We're going to set up video conferences so that uh, if a coach is being interviewed we're, by uh, the media, the media will be able to do it on conference call, but not. We've got great Skype call. facilities now in those situations. Where, which leads to my question, Mikesh: yeah. Is isolation actually going to work? I mean, how? Practical is it to isolate everyone in a community to protect against any virus? It, look, it, it, it is very hard to do and it's very hard to live with if you are in isolation. Um, I, part of the co- early conversations in our practice, four doctors called in sick and got tested. And until they're free, we can't actually use their services. 
uh, to, in their homes, it's therefore difficult for them to li live yeah. their lives and get the provisions in for two weeks if they haven't, you know, as they're waiting to get better or waiting for the result to come through. Dr. May? Well, I just want to add to that. I think it's really tricky because often you're asymptomatic for several days before. Um, so you know, asymptomatic means not, not showing yeah, the signs exactly. of symptoms. You're not coughing or sneezing. So you, you're walking around for several days carrying the virus. And by the time you, you get your sniffle, you know, it's sort of the viral load's peaking and um, you probably have come into contact with a bunch of people. So baseline hygiene is really, really important. Okay. And mate, you're saying also the other thing is for people to, to get sleep. To, I mean, this might sound old fashioned, <laughs> yeah. but you need to sleep. You need to eat well. You need to get outside in the sun and do some exercise. A hundred percent. So there, there are a myriad of viruses out there. I mean, coronavirus is an example of a virus that's kind of evolved suddenly. It's kind of, it's kind of, we've got a massive species evolution and, you know, that's a whole nother show going into why that's happened. But given that we've got this extreme change, we need to um, reinforce ourselves because our best defense against any illness is a good immune system. So be healthy. Be healthy. Thank you. The other real issue is that when this happened in China, of course, it was winter and they had their flu. Yeah. Guess what's coming down the road for us? So we are going to have a very good flu vaccine available by the end of the month. We need to get people into flu immunization clinics, and that's the best single defense we've got against flu, which will protect us against Dr. that. Dr. COVID. Makesh, is that the flu? Because last year was a horrible flu season in Melbourne. Yeah. Is that the vaccine for the flu as opposed to the coronavirus flu? Absolutely. Right. It's only for the flu. There is no vaccine for coronavirus. So the trick at the moment is our yes. worry, and what the Premier was worried about yesterday, is that we'll have a flu season, because you do. That's what happens in winter, but it'll be exacerbated by a simultaneous coronavirus that could have a similar effect. Now, last year, does 800 people died of the flu in Victoria. But the, I just want to point out, this is how you think about it. If you've got other hit, you're taking other hits. So if you've got mm. common cold, cough, you, your immune system's tied up dealing with that. It's sort of like if you just breathe straight pollution or eat junk, like your immune system's tied up. So that's less bandwidth you've got to fight off yeah, coronavirus. Okay. We've got uh, two great medical practitioners with us, Dr. May Ling Dory, who, uh, May, I'm going to ask you a little bit about what we should be doing as far as training and keeping ourselves fit and some of the things, maybe even some supplements we should be taking. And Dr. Makesh Hakawal, who is right uh, full bottle on all this. In fact, uh, Doctor, you were there, you are in Canberra yesterday, were you? I did go up to Canberra. Um, we were having conversations which included how to be prepared for uh, the, the uh, coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, the fact is that in our practice where we all geared up, We've run out of gear. We yeah. haven't got masks. We haven't got gowns. We've heard the federal minister this morning talk about getting those more available. And I think that's a really important thing to do. If we're going to have to test 200,000 people, we're going to need to have the kits to be able to do that. Lots of people want to ask questions, uh, Makesh and, uh, and Mayling, if we can get through as many as we can. Starting with Dane from Chelsea, 13353. Dane, what's your question this morning? Oh, g'day. Um, look, we've, my wife and I have got a funny situation here. I, I came home... <coughs> <coughs> Go, go, here you go. No, 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 no I'm, I'm not. You're the, the you're the healthy one. I'm not. The, I'm not the problem. My wife. I came home last night and I saw my wife and I kissed her and she's feeling um, pretty ordinary. Now she works in a in medical research. She works in a small private hospital and she's got an elevated temperature and a sore neck, uh, sore throat. She's um, um, you know feeling pretty pretty crappy actually. Um, and we're just sitting there thinking, well, what if? I mean, I'm due okay. to go well, to work I'll today. Okay. We got what did she do, okay. Mikesh? Well, this sounds like it may not be coronavirus. This sounds like what you get at winter when you get access to other kind of viruses, including influenza, real flu, or something in between. It's the sort of thing that you try and see how you sit out at home. You take your normal paracetamol rest, etc. But call your clinic, and we can get a chance to go and see your normal GP I don't think it's one of those things that needs to go to a, a coronavirus clinic. So, Doc, okay. I, I haven't been able to really get my head around what is the coronavirus. Like, I've had a cough for six weeks before I went overseas and came back. I've, I've gone to the doctor three times to check. I actually even went and had x-rays yesterday to make sure. Yeah. All clear, okay, so, because I don't want to come in here. I'm at football clubs. I'm all around the place. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm the last person who needs to be a carrier of coronavirus. But... What is it that people out there who are listening to us driving to work this morning need to be aware of to think, hang on, I might have coronavirus? It's a great question. The problem is that all of these things start off in a similar way. Runny eyes, runny nose, sore throat, temperature. The differential here is the first 
point of concern was traveling in from overseas yeah, okay. or having contact with people from overseas or people who might have had this in the past. Then you get into a situation where more and more people are interacting with this. So the key message is treat yourself like you've got a cold or flu and stay at home. Get yourself better. If you're not getting better, if you are worried, then it may be worth going and have that consultation with a GP. In the future, we may be able to do it by video rather than coming in to a con contaminated room. And then if you need to be tested, you'll be tested. But right. don't panic about it. We can get, do these things in a systematic, sensible way. Lots of tweets uh, and calls coming through, Rosie. Kathy McMillan has tweeted saying that she returned from northern Italy on Sunday night, developed cold symptoms on the plane. The GP couldn't offer her testing, waited four and a half hours at the Box Hill Hospital coronavirus clinic to be tested. She's worried that there are people there that don't need to be tested, whereas she's come from that zone. What should Kathy do? She's absolutely right to be tested coming in from Italy where we are today with Italy being in, in lockdown. Mm. Absolutely no question at all. The question is, is everybody else in the queue there worthy of that test? And How do you to decide? be honest, if you're a health worker and you're in uh, danger of going to work and then having somehow found out about it, getting into trouble, uh, of course you have to get tested. So we'll find there's this more testing of health workers from that point of view. Could she come and say you? Uh, she could, but I haven't got anything to test with at the moment. There you oh. go. So this is a big issue. Mm. Monica from Berwick's on the line. G'day, Monica. Um, for those, the average person that gets it, not the high-risk people that, that get this, how severe is it? How different is it to a, a common cold or, or a flu? Sounds of silence here. Yeah. Yeah, right. it's I think it's really hard to know because, um, I mean, remember the vast majority of people, so it's between 98 and well, it's 97 to 98% of people that have it just recover from it. I think that's yeah. an important, important factor. And I think your question is absolutely spot on. It's actually people who are, you know, who are in the older age group, I guess, uh, with multiple problems become more, more of an issue. Uh, and of course, the people who are on chemotherapy or uh, having other sorts of treatment, they need to be very wary. Um, everyone else probably will have the same sort of starting point runny eyes, runny nose, sore throat, temperature, etc. And get through it. And get through it. We Thanks. take a look at what's trending, and of the 30 stories, more than a third of them are all coronavirus-related. Dr. Mayling Dory is with us, Dr. Makesh Hakawal, former president of the AMA, to answer your and, questions. And our calls have just blown up the switchboard, so we'll get through as many as we can. Stefania from East Melbourne. Go, Stefania. Hi, well, hi, how are you doing? Good, thank you. How are you? Very good. Uh, firstly, I'd like to commend the radio station. I'm actually a doctor, but not in general practice. And I want to thank Mei Ling and Dr. Makesh, both of you, for being frontline to actually coming out and talking to the public so that we can allay fears and panic and give true medical facts. So thank you. Thank You're you, Stephanie. Yeah. Is that all you want to say? Because if you're praising right. us, uh, keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I was going to ask you, um, is there in China, they've got a fast track mechanism of testing for COVID-19. And I was reading, because I've been reading all the medical stuff, that you can do a test within four hours, but I'm not in general practice. Is there a way of fast tracking so that the healthcare workers can get tested at least so that we can go in nice and clean to work knowing we don't have it? Is that possible? Uh, there's two answers to that. One is um, we are building up capacity, and I think you'll see as part of the package announced by the Federal Health Minister Greg Hunt today that they are working with other labs other than the re so-called reference labs, the main lab in each state, to do this in more of the private labs. The second is the mechanism is available to do rapid testing of influenza within four, four, 40 minutes, or tw actually 20 minutes of doing a swab and putting it in, in, a, in a, even in a practice, at a practice level. Right. They're developing that for COVID, but of course it's only just been discovered four weeks ago. Yeah. So we've done a remarkable thing. We forget that it's taken this long, this quick actually, to get to where we are, which we would have never done in the past, uh, when we were, they're working really fast. So the companies are trying to do a rapid test in a practice, in an emergency department, et cetera, which you can get. We're not there yet, but the actual capacity in the system is increasing because of the supports of government. Thanks, Stefani, for your call. Dave is on the line from Lindhurst. What have you got, David? Yeah, it's for my 25-year-old um, daughter. She's a school teacher. She takes a weekly dose of methotextrate for her rheumatoid arthritis. So my question to the doctors is, should she stop taking the methotextrate to, because it's obviously a, an immune um, suppressor, um, is A, question, and B, should she still be attending the school and putting herself at risk there? And if not, how long does she have to stay away? 
It's, it's, Mate? I don't know what to tell her. I'm going to have a crack at answering this one and then throw to Makesh if there are any gaps. But I think first and foremost, life needs to go on. Um, your daughter obviously has uh, had arthritis for a while and methotrexate sounds like it's an important part of her symptom control. There are certainly things that she can do on top of that to reinforce and support her well-being. And I would, I'm happy to you know, chat to you offline about that in detail. Um, but the short answer is no. I don't think unless she's got new symptoms that she should prophylactically stay away from work because this is going to go on for a while. Okay. Good stuff. Thanks, Thanks so. David. Uh, Lachlan from Yarra Glen. Go, Lachlan. Yeah, mate. Uh, why don't they, uh, with bowel cancer, when you get to 50, you get a package in the mail. Why don't they start doing that with a, say, a thermometer, you know, a sheet to do, tell you the symptoms like you two doctors are on the radio to give us old people sort of heads up and um, some way of testing our temperature and staying at home. Fifty's not that old. Let's just get that up. There. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Not, not sure what Lockie's question was there. I think you were talking about owning a wedding venue and uh, should you cancel yeah. the weddings. I mean, that's that's a point I wouldn't mind. I mean, the whole idea, Makesh and change his uh, and question. Ma- we'll change change his question. Yeah, ready to go. <laughs> we're going to shut down the the, the whole. Well, Makesh, what's the reasonable answer to that? Look, I think we have to take the, the best advice available, and that's changing rapidly day by day. In fact, during the day. We've just seen another school shut down because of specific concerns. So, you know, we'll have to make a call. And we have to take the expert view. It's very easy to be an armchair critic, but some, if you're next not on the line for doing something wrong, then that, yeah. that's a whole different ball game. Uh, you know, I think that if the decision is made that you need to not do that, then that's what we have to go with. The most important thing, though, is, like the previous question, uh, is that to, to keep fit and well. And that's what May was speaking about. It's important to be uh, eating well, sleeping well, um, getting out for a walk at least um, and trying to protect yourself uh, as you do any other co- co- cold or flu that's out there. Which is the last caller we're going to take this morning is Maya from Footscray. Uh, May, I think this is for you. Maya. Good morning. How are we? Good, thank you. Good morning, team. Um, who am I? Sorry, is this you, Ed? It is, yeah. yeah. Good day, bud. Good, mate. Good, good, good. good. Um, my question is, <clears throat> what food should we be... <clears throat> Excuse me. Jeez, how you going there, Maya? You all right? <laughs> I'm perfectly right, Marty. I'm just in a machine right now. I'm just overwhelmed by speaking to the team here. Um, what food should we be eating? Is there any type of food should we be avoiding? Should we should we be eating deep fried dog or should we be eating Probably healthy not the deep fried dog? I, would I have love my, dogs. But, yeah. <laughs> Never eat your dog. No. I um, they do that's serve a, dog in Beijing, that's but an no. Nice rule to take with us. For yeah, yeah. Us. Just don't eat your dog. Uh, mate, uh, take, take us through what's uh, 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 what. You, now you're you're a very healthy person, um, and you've got uh, you've got yourself lined up, and your um, you know your diary right to do these things. Maybe just give us a hint on how we can get ourselves in a busy lifestyle to hit those targets: the food and the exercise. What okay. do you like to do? I just want to reinstate: you've got to you've got to do sleep first, because if you don't have enough sleep, you can't make good decisions. Second one is diet. So when we say that, is that eight hours? Well, minimum like six to seven quality hours. Yeah. If you can get eight, more power to you. Fantastic. Yeah. But um, that's critical. So then the second most important thing is diet. Whole food diet. If you can cook it yourself, great. Where you buy a produce should matter. If you can't, if you can't get hold of organic, make sure you wash any pesticides off, you know, your fruit and veg. Um, but basically a diverse whole food diet is the way to go. If you are going to eat meat, I personally like grass-fed meat. Things that have min- like done the old-fashioned way. If you're lucky enough to have a backyard, grow a few veggies. These are the things that will really shift the needle if you can. Um, Don't they taste different compared to some of the yeah. stuff you get these days? Because we've become a, a, a 24 uh, hour a day, 52 week situation. We want strawberries. We want them every day. In the old days, you had to wait till they were in season. Didn't Correct. You? The other thing is you got to you know exercise is important too. Get outside. Go for a walk. Doesn't have to be expensive if you can manage it. The odd ice bath. You know, I'm a big fan. Yeah, you're a big ice bath person, aren't you? Uh, Dr. Makesh, final words from you. Um, now, you've been at the pointy end of this. You've actually been provoking the government to think about what they need to do. They've responded. We expect tomorrow, as you said, uh, Greg Hunt, the health minister today, the treasurer tomorrow will come out and the prime minister with a stimulus package. What's the last thing you want to say to people at the moment as far as any fears that they might have? I think the issue is that we have got the message out there to our politicians and to our medical people that work with us, us on the front line that are working here, 
we work in the state system in general practice, but we're not considered that way. We will we want to be part of that, and we will make sure we can give you the right advice to make the right decisions. So work with us in the, on the ground at the ground root level, uh, work across the states and territories, and work so we've got one message, one hymn sheet, and let's just get on with it. Okay. We're ready. All right. Well, I think the, the great thing in the last maybe uh, 24, 48 hours, Das, is the uh, the adults have got control of the conversation, uh, including our two guests this morning, I think the Premier yesterday, and uh, even the AFL. I just thought there was a, a calming down and a realisation there. There may be issues, but we'll face the issues as they come. Pretty good advice. Look after your health. Be uh, as fit and healthy as you possibly can. Maybe your best protection. Again, sending thanks to Mayling. Thanks to Mikesh this morning.